I'm Jeff Lenoski. I'm a professional mountain bike rider. And I'm Adam Proceis, the director of R&D here in Lyons, Colorado at Reeb Cycles. Today we're going to talk to you about our two newest suspension bike models. The SST and the Steezel. I've been in the bike industry for over 25 years. I've been working with Reeb for over five now. And the thing that attracted me to the brand is that everybody here rides and they ride hard. Jeff and I both have been riding bikes for a long time and we, we have ridden a lot of bikes that don't exactly meet our needs. So we wanted to create a bike that's resilient and fun to ride. So uh, that's why we do it all here. And that's why we're so passionate about these projects. Working with Reeb is awesome. It's a truly collaborative effort. We discuss and sometimes argue over every single detail of these bikes, but it allows us to make the best product possible. Jeff and I like to work together on uh, bike geometry. Jeff's out on the East Coast and we're in the mountains where riding's a little bit faster, uh, big mountain stuff where Jeff is riding tighter trails. So we really get to bounce a lot of good ideas off of each other and really hone in on the perfect geometry for these bikes. Reeb's going on its 10th year. Um, probably for the first five years, we made a lot of bikes out of steel. That's because it's always been a handmade brand, low volume. But nowadays with a lot of the technological advances in manufacturing, now we're able to make a bike that's truly on par with any other material. 3D printing has come a long way even in the past two years. Um, also the accessibility. Now that we're printing domestically at Cumberland Additive in Texas, we're able to use uh, rapid prototyping on bikes as well as uh, just increasing our throughput with bikes and being able to produce a full suspension bike almost just as easy as we were producing hardtails in the past. With these new bikes, we've made a big transition away from the front triangles that we've been using in the past. And I get a lot of questions from people why we made that switch and it's easy to tell them that we've always preferred the ride quality of steel, but up until recently, it just wasn't possible to make a reasonable weight steel bike. How is that possible now? Exactly, it's very difficult to CNC machine steel um, at very consistent quality. And now with 3D printing, we can design a part that is, uh, uses additive technology so we can, we can make a hollow part that's lighter and stiffer than a machined part. So when we started developing uh, side projects like the Bruiser, the Gearbox bike, we went down to Baja and saw trophy trucks that were all steel tube chassis with aluminum swing arms. So we were like, why don't we do this with bikes? This is the feel that we want and it's, it's what we want to go forward with in the future. Yeah, it's cool because the new technologies allow us to make bikes at the scale that we make them, which is super small batch, high quality, but with performance comparable to any material. Exactly. If we were based in Taiwan, we would have a much bigger selection of hydroform tubing and, and different profiles and very large factories. But in reality, we're doing it here and steel is definitely the product that works best for us. The powder bed fusion of 3D printing is that this part actually starts as a powdered metal and it uses lasers to center the powder together to form this 99% homogulous part where it's, it's solid 316L stainless material. This allows us to create very intricate parts. This part has stuff that is completely not manufacturable by any CNC machine. So we can do some pretty cool stuff with it. And that allows us to make frames that are stiff and light. Exactly. The weights are competitive. The quality surpasses most bikes on the market. To the, to the everyday rider though, what are the other advantages to a steel bike? So the big thing is just attention to detail on our finished product. I mean, we're building every bike right here. We are all riders. We know how the finished product, number one, gets put together and how it feels out on the trail. This bike rides so incredible. I've ridden carbon bikes. I've ridden tons of aluminum bikes. I've ridden tons of steel bikes. This bike rides quiet and it's very confident going down the trail. Biggest thing for me is impact resistance. Uh, a lot of times, my stuff doesn't go right and you're banging stuff on rocks and trees and whatever and I have the confidence to get up and throw a leg back over that bike and keep going. Exactly. Steel can get dented. It, it can get beat up. It's not, you know, you don't have to worry about abrasion like carbon. Um, it's, it's just a very resilient material for sure. I meet a lot of riders and they want to know why I choose a REAP. And for me, one of the main reasons is I feel confident saying our quality is as good or better than any other bike on the market. But then the second thing is the sense of community. I feel like everybody that buys or rides a Reeb is a friend of ours, which is super cool. We open our doors once a week for weekly rides, once a quarter for big open houses. 
and those customers are really important into the products. The direct feedback on our product is huge for us. We're able to uh, rapid prototype, we're able to change quickly, we're able to make any updates that we need. So getting all that direct feedback from customers is huge. We're answering Instagram questions, we're answering emails every day. We like to get back to people as quick as they can as quick as we can so we can actually have that, you know, personal connection to the customer. That's that's huge for us. Yeah, we're not waiting three to five years to develop a new product. We're no, listening to trends and adapting and we're talking to our customers and when somebody buys a Reeb, they've probably spoken to somebody within the company. Or not probably, they have. And not a lot of bike companies can say that. So we have two new suspension bikes, the SST and the Steezel. If we look back in the timeline, a couple years ago my van got broken into, my trials bike and my Diculus hardtail got stolen. And we tried to take the trials bike and the Diculus and that became the Ridiculous. And then if you took that Ridiculous and it mated it with the Squeeb, I think that's how we ended up with the SST. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we were looking to build a bike uh, to kind of round out our offerings. We we had a uh, we had hardtails and then we had 150 millimeter travel bikes. Uh, there's a, m a missing spot in there, and that's the 120 millimeter like front range ripper for us. Uh, a lot of the trails that we ride are high mileage and and not necessarily big mountain descents, but. Colorado riding, so we wanted something that was a ripper on single track, but most importantly, full suspension to to take up some of the the hits. And the one the 120 bike just really filled the void that we were looking for for a long time. Yeah, so I live on the East Coast, and I would always find myself bouncing back and forth between the hardtail and the squeeb. And when we developed the V4, I was the one who pushed for the 130 version because. 150 was already getting a little bit long for East Coast tech. And the, the 120 now on the SST seems perfect. It's nimble, um, it allows me to ride that tech terrain that I want to ride, and it still feels like it has way more travel. But when I'm doing those tech climbs, when I'm trying to do a lot of those tight maneuvers and I don't want that big suspension window, it really works awesome. Yeah, exactly. And when you look at a classic Reeb, you're looking at those straight tubes, you know, the, the original Reeb hardtail single speed straight tubes, OX Platinum from True Temper, like we really wanted to bring that back into the SST. So we went to the steel front triangle and brought back that straight backbone look where it, top tube runs straight into the seat stays. And we wanted something that that rode as good as a hardtail again, but actually offered suspension. And the SST knocks it out of the park in that book. The Steezel is our newest long travel suspension bike, but a lot of people don't know that before that bike and the SST, there was the Bruiser. So that was your one-off passion project prototype bike that had 170 millimeters of rear travel. Yeah, I like to go big and I wanted something that was built like a brick shit house. So that bike proved that you can get the ride quality that you wanted. The SST proved that we could actually manufacture them, not as a one-off prototype. Is that how it all came together? Exactly. I learned a lot with manufacturability of steel and going to a different design and full suspension, uh, full suspension steel. And we knew that we could translate that to a short travel platform really well. And since that was going to fill the void of our offerings, uh, we wanted to split the difference between hardtails and 150 bikes. So the SST was a great place to start. And that bike worked out so well. We all loved it. Consumers loved it you tested the Bruiser under the most extreme circumstances possible, so that brought us to the Steezel. Yeah, the, the steel front triangle really brought the ride quality that we wanted, so using the aluminum rear end that was proven on the Squeeb and then proven on the Bruiser, it really made sense to bring that forward on the Steezel also. So the Steezel really is a culmination of seven years of R&D development. It's allowed us to make the best long travel suspension bike we've ever made. Exactly, we took the SST and the Bruiser and found all the best attributes and it helped us develop the 155 millimeter long travel format. One of my favorite things about the Steezel is how customizable it is. There's five different front triangles, there's two different chain stay lengths, you can ride it mullet or full 29er, and it works well with air and coil shocks. It's totally customizable. We sell more bikes to more people around the world than ever, so now people can ride the exact bike they want. Exactly. When I first started developing the Bruiser, I knew I wanted to try longer chainstays because of the larger format of that bike. I went with 445 millimeter chainstays and immediately I felt right at home with that package. There's a lot of riders out there that like to 
try longer chain stays, try shorter chain stays, longer reach, shorter reach. So we wanted to make the whole bike be able to be customizable, like you said. On any size of Steezel, you can pick either short chain stays or long chain stays, so you can really tune your ride. Yeah, so between choosing your chain stay length, five different front triangles, air coil, mullet, full 29er, you could dial in your bike to ride exactly how you want it. Exactly. It was fun talking bikes with you today. If you want to demo a bike, head over to the website and reserve a demo. Or stop by the shop here in Lyons, Colorado for a tour. Otherwise, we hope to see you out on the trail. How did yours go so fast? I don't know. I was acting like I was in a chugging competition or something. <laughs> Open that throat. Yeah.